everybody. It's Audra here at Homesteading in Idaho. We are in my backyard. Behind me is a whole patch of sunflowers. They were standing really tall, like much, much taller than me. Um, but typical Idaho fall, we've had a bunch of wind and it was a little bit wet, so they fell over. Um, they keep growing. I mean, sunflowers are the hardiest things ever. But we are reaching that point in the year where I need to start doing some trimming, get the yard under control, get things under control. But primarily i want to harvest these sunflowers and i'm going to show you what i'm doing i'm harvesting them for their leaves for the heads of the sunflowers and then the stalks i'm going to use the leaves and the heads for feeding livestock i could also use the leaves for cooking with eating salads um, you can use them like a tortilla shell things like that the sunflower heads we could eat the sunflowers we could roast them we could um also uh, i steam them if they've got a closed head, I'll steam it, and it's kind of like an artichoke on the inside. So there's a bunch of different ways we're utilizing them. But today, I'm going to focus on the ones behind me. I'm going to be cutting them. Leaves and heads are going to be put in buckets and then put on a drying rack to dry, which will be livestock feed over the wintertime. The stalks, if they're small, they'll be feed. But if they're really tall, I'm actually going to save those. I'll show you why. We're going to use those for gardening the following year. So let's flip this around, show you what I'm doing. So this whole patch of sunflowers, all of them decided to take a nap. They're all just <laughs> flopped over and they're in the way. Like I can't, I can't get through my walkway to the garden back there right now because of the way they have flopped over. I can't get to my elderberry very easily. So definitely going to be cleaning these up. I'm just going to be doing super simple today. Handy dandy, plain boring nippers. So I was talking to you guys real quick about eating them. This head is a little bit too small in my opinion, but you eat what you can eat when you need it. Uh, when they're closed like this, you can take them, cut them off, remove the leaves. You don't need the leaves. And uh, you can steam these and then you peel it back and you remove the top that would be, you know, your inside like this. And anyway, underneath it, there's a white flesh and it's, it's like an artichoke. Um, and then for eating, roasting them, this sunflower type right here. So I have a mixed batch of sunflowers hanging out in here, mixed types. This one really doesn't have anything worth enjoying. Um, the, the seeds are just way too tiny. They're not even visible. Let's see if I can find one. This one would be more of a roaster. And so when you roast them, you get these where they're still really young and you would take and you go like this, you get this part off because you don't want to roast that. And I take off all the petals, but you expose those seeds that are underneath in there. And then I, I put a little bit of oil and seasoning, salt and pepper, whatever on it. And put it in either a roasting pan or with some foil and just roast it. And then I, I'm not a fan. I know I see people that eat this part here. Not a fan. I just like to scoop the seeds with a, uh, like a spoon and just eat them that way. But like I said, this is actually animal food that I'm going to be focusing on today. This section here is actually over our drain field for our property, our house. So because sunflowers are so good at removing heavy metals and purging other things from the soil, I'm not going to eat anything from this area. Am I concerned about it causing damage to the animals? No. If I, if I was, I absolutely would not even be using it for the animals. I would just compost it and use it later for various compost reasons. But I feel fairly certain that it's not gonna cause any damage to our livestock. So with that being said, this is all just gonna be cut and dried. Now I do leave, there's like, there's so many as you can see. I do leave a big section for our wild birds and our squirrels. They will enjoy that over the winter time. And yes, I do leave plenty for these beautiful be uh, bees that are working. That's a native bumblebee. I will be leaving plenty. This is not my only sunflower patch. I have, oh goodness, I'm the queen of sunflowers around here. So I literally have too many sunflowers. Now, I, wait, I can't say that because if I say that, my husband's going to find out. We have a joke. Um, when we first met, uh, there were some sunflowers at his house. And I was like, oh, someday I'm going to grow so many sunflowers. He's like, no. You're going to have to be limited because he believed that sunflowers draw ants, which is kind of funny. I've never had an ant problem. But anyway, um, we often joke that uh, it wasn't an argument. 
but uh, you know the joke is that I won that won that argument and um every year my sunflower patches get bigger and bigger and bigger okay so like I said I've got the nippers I've got the bucket this is what I'm going to put things in that I'm going to then take to put on the drying rack this one's a really great example of one that's perfect to use the entire thing for livestock feed The reason I say this one's perfect for livestock feed, this is just a very thin, I mean, it's the size of my, less than the width of my finger. This is just great. It's going to break down easy for livestock. I could leave it like this, but honestly, if I leave it like this, I end up with leaves that fall off and they're harder to take care of. So if I can do it the way I like to do it, I can kind of make bales with it. Um, so we're going to chop it up. It's all going to go into the bucket. Chop, chop, chop. Takes up less space when I do it this way as well. Whew. <laughs> these, these stalks here that are really strong, really thick. This one, I'll save this stalk, let it dry. It's perfect to use in the garden the following year as like gardening steaks. I just chop the leaves off and I'll just let this sit where it can just dry out naturally. Just remove everything on top. Now, if I want to send seeds, save seeds to put elsewhere, I could save the seed heads and I, I just walk around and drop them, honestly. I don't even plant the seeds. I just take the heads, they're dry, and just toss them where I want future generations of sunflowers to grow. It, it, warfare, right? <laughs> Sunflower warfare. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to trim off the more spindly sections of this. So then, I mean, yeah, it's got a bit of a bend to it. Maybe I'll make a teepee with it next year. You know, a bean trellis teepee or something? That could work. Here's a fun sunflower effect for you. Did you know that milking animals like cattle, sheep, goats, when they eat the sunflower seeds, did you know their milk production goes up? Pretty nice and handy. That's another reason why I save these. We have mamas having babies earlier in the year, well before sunflowers are ready to go. So if I save these, it's a great feed source for any animal, honestly. But it's really great for those mamas that are having babies and uh, we're milking or just they're feeding their babies. There we go. This can get set aside and used next year. Now, honestly, there's something else you guys can do with this. Um, this one, it's really not gonna, a good example. Hopefully I'll find another one in here. Now, I would not use it for this at all, but it, it, because of the section that these are in. I have another section of sunflowers where I can do this. Anyway, the big thick stalks, you cut them in half. There's a white layer of, like, it's fluffiness in there. Anyway, you scoop that out and dehydrate it. It is an awesome addition to use as a flour source. So you can add it to your flour that you're using for cooking. It's like when you dry zucchinis to create zucchini flour, where you also can make sunflower flour. All right, guys, it's getting dark. Still working on chopping through some sunflowers. And of course, when you have a homestead, there's always a bunch of other things that have to be done. So um, I wish it was like, oh, yeah, I totally got that project done in so much time. But yeah, um, when you have a homestead, you kind of bounce between projects as you go along. But I am making some progress. And anyway, I'm just coming on here to show you uh, how I'm drying these. So I have some on some pallets. And then this one, it's like a thick floor pallet. Um, indirect sunlight. And they're going to be on here for, uh, I'm going to say three days, six days, depending on how thick um, some of them are. And I'll just kind of each day move them around, kind of um, fluff them around, if you will. And get them as much sun as they can take before they're dry and then they're going to go into a container and get stored for wintertime use. So let me turn the camera around and show you. Man on camera it's an impressive pile. It's actually not as thick as it looks. Um, you know there's a lot of sticks in there and stuff like that. There is quite a bit of breathing room and I'm just gonna keep adding to it. It's on this pallet. There's some slats so it can breathe but like I said each, each day two three times a day I'll come out here and I'll just kind of you know pick the pile up and like rotate it if you will. Um, and I'm going to be adding to it too. It's getting dark, so I just want to make sure I could film where you guys could actually see. But um, 
I'm actually going to continue for hopefully about another hour doing this and add to my pile for the wintertime feed. If you have any questions, please reach out. And like always, you guys, I enjoy hearing from you. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.